Do you want to be a walking nuke destroying everything in your path? Do you want a build that features unlimited void souls, constant weakening, infinite devour, and incredible ability spam? If so, then buckle in for this void warlock build that will transcend you into an actual god. Starting off in the subclass, the foundation of this build centers around our first aspect, Child of the Old Gods, which summons a Void Soul for us upon casting our Rift. And when dealing weapon damage to a target, our little pal will fly over to the target's location and begin to drain them, which will do damage over time and also weaken them. When we drain targets with our Void Soul, we gain Grenade and Melee Energy, if we are using a Healing Rift which of course we will want to equip for this build. But we will also gain class ability energy upon defeating targets that are being drained by our Void Souls. This ability regen will only get better with our first fragment Echo of Harvest, which creates an orb of power and a Void Breach for us upon defeating a weakened target. And if you didn't know already, Void Breaches grant us class ability energy upon pickup. For even more ways to weaken targets and create Void Breaches for ourselves, we're going to be going with Echo of Undermining for our second fragment. Echo of Undermining weakens targets damaged by our grenades, and of course, while pairing this with Echo of Harvest, it will give us another great source of Void Breaches via defeating weakened targets. So with one aspect and two fragments, we have the baseline for our grenade, melee, and class ability spam covered. Our Void Breaches are actually going to help us even further in the survivability department through our second aspect and our third fragment, Feed the Void and Echo of Starvation. The Feed the Void aspect grants us Improved Devour when defeating a target with a Void ability. And with this Improved Devour, we will get a little extra health and grenade energy back when defeating enemies. Echo of Starvation also provides us a second way to acquire Devour by picking up Orbs of Power or Void Breaches that we create from Echo of Harvest. We're also going to be taking our Devour buff one step further with our fourth and final fragment, Echo of Persistence, which increases the duration of our Devour by 50%. For our grenade, I like to run Vortex Grenades in PvE, but it is sort of up to you. You could go Scatter Nades here if you really want, but I think you'll get the most value out of Vortex Grenades. For the melee, we only have one choice, which is Pocket Singularity, so we, of course, have to run that. For our Rift, we're going to be on Healing Rift for this build. Like I touched on earlier, in order to get Grenade and Melee Energy back from our Void Souls, we need to be on Healing Rift. For the super, it's entirely up to you here. I like to run Nova Bomb Vortex since I'm not a fan of Nova Warp or Nova Bomb Cataclysm, aka Slova Bomb, but it's really a comfort thing. Whatever you want to run, you can totally run it. Before we continue with the video, if you learned anything new, consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel if you like what you see so far for more Destiny 2 guides just like this one. For our exotic armor piece, we're going to be using the Briar Binds Exotic Gauntlets. These gauntlets will be buffing our Void Souls even further thanks to the intrinsic perk, One with the Void, which allows our Void Souls to last 5 seconds longer, gain escalating damage and durability as they defeat targets, and it even allows you to retrieve them to then redeploy. More specifically, upon picking up a deployed Void Soul, you will gain the Void Soul Ready buff for 25 seconds allowing it to be redeployed while keeping its kill bonuses. Kill bonuses for the Void Souls max out at 6 stacks, and at 6 stacks, they will gain a 100% damage buff and 50% damage resistance. A good thing to keep in mind is that if multiple Void Souls tether the same target, they will each deal the damage of the first soul. Meaning, if you have a fresh Void Soul damaging an enemy and you redeploy a buffed Void Soul onto that target, the buffed soul will do the same damage of the first fresh soul that began draining the target first. So with this in mind, spreading out your Void Souls to different areas and enemies is a good idea to help do as much damage as possible. For our weapons, any Void weapons here of course will be great to synergize with our mods that we will go over shortly. Anything with destabilized rounds or repulsor brace is going to be a fantastic choice. If you have it, the exotic sidearm buried bloodline from the warlord's ruined dungeon is going to be an amazing choice here. There's kind of a lot going on with this sidearm, so let's go over what it does. First, with violent reanimation, multiple final blows with this weapon will grant the user devour. 
Four kills on red bar enemies will grant devour, or if you kill a powerful enemy, aka an orange bar or above, you will also instantly get devour. So that is another great way to gain devour from a distance with this build if you can't get close enough to use your abilities. And with the intrinsic trait Hungering Quarrel, this weapon double fires tracking bolts and leeches health from the target. On top of all that, with the catalyst, this weapon will also weaken enemies on hit while devour is active. And with this build, we will basically always have devour up. Plus, this gives us yet another method of weakening targets to proc Echo of Harvest for even even more potential to create void breaches. Also, in Season 23, we have access to the Unraveling Orbs Artifact perk, which grants your strand weapons unraveling rounds upon picking up orbs. So if you're watching this video in Season 23, you could go with a strand primary weapon like Rufus's Fury. If you're watching after Season 23, I found that weapons with kinetic tremors do really well with this build since we're going to be weakening targets that are usually in close proximity to each other. So having a primary weapon that can deal area of effect damage is pretty nice. Something like the Showrunner or the Tiger Spite will both do pretty well here. Moving over to our mods, starting on the helmet, we want to run a couple of Harmonic Siphon mods so that we create more potent orbs for ourselves whenever we get kills with our Void weapons. We also want to top that off with a copy of Ashes to Assets so that we gain super energy back when we get kills with our grenades. On the arms, we definitely want to run one copy of Firepower so that we can get orbs of power generated for ourselves whenever we get final blows with our grenades. And then I chose to run two copies of Bolstering Detonation here. I just found that having multiple copies of Bolstering Detonation felt really nice to help get my Rift energy back since this build is so heavily focused on getting our rift back so that we can deploy as many void souls as we possibly can to help keep that gameplay loop going of casting a rift, deploying the void soul, and just getting our abilities back that way through the weakening effects and the leeching effects of our void souls. For the chest, I just chose to run three different resistances based on the activity I was running, so nothing special here. On our legs, we're going to want to run a copy of Innervation, Invigoration, and Absolution to further help with that ability regen and spam capability. And lastly, on our class item, we're going to want to run a copy of Bomber to reduce our grenade cooldown whenever we pop our Rift, a powerful attraction to automatically collect orbs of power whenever we cast our Rift, which again will allow us to full heal because of Echo of Starvation, and to top off the class item, we're going to want to run a copy of Utility Kickstart to gain extra Rift energy back whenever it is fully depleted. For this build, in terms of stat distribution, I would recommend to prioritize in Resilience, then Discipline, and then Recovery in that order. As always, 30% damage reduction in PvE is always nice to have, and then having 100 Discipline is also good here because we do want to get our grenades back as fast as possible that we can keep chucking them to proc our bolstering detonation to help us get our rift back more often. And then the rest, if you have any, you can just dump into recovery. We don't need full recovery here because again, with as much devour as we're going to have and as much full heal capability that's going to give us with our subclass and our mods, it's okay here to sacrifice a little bit of recovery. So now that you have your build set up, let's go over how to play it. For our gameplay loop, we're going to want to start off any engagement by popping our rift if we have it up just to prep a void soul ready to start leeching enemies. Next, what I like to do is I like to take out my primary weapon and just start doing damage to a target just so that void soul flies on over so I can start my gameplay loop. And then I also like to take out my buried bloodline and just get a couple kills with it or throw a grenade to proc devour. So I really can just start spamming all my abilities with not too much of a worry in the world. Once you get some Void Souls deployed out into the battlefield, you can really just start to spam your abilities anytime that they come up. Your Void Souls are going to be draining enemies and you're going to get your abilities back really fast thanks to our subclass and our mod setup and also thanks to Briar Binds. And if at any point you see any of your Void Souls out in the battlefield not draining targets, you can just walk over to them and pick it up. And then look for some other enemies to damage so that you redeploy your Void Soul so you get the benefit of getting your abilities back all over again. And also, just be sure to pick up any of Void Breaches that are nearby and pop your Rift near orbs so you pick them straight up again. 
And again, any time that we pick up a Void Breach, we will also proc Devour through Echo of Starvation, and we will gain class ability energy back. So to recap, that's Rift to deploy a Void Soul, dish out some damage with your primary weapon and or your Buried Bloodline. And then to get Devour, get some kills with your Buried Bloodline, or you can always just throw a grenade. That works too. All while you're doing that, if there is at any point you get your Rift back again, just pop it instantly again to redeploy a Void Soul. The more Void Souls you have out on the field, the better and the faster that you will regain all your abilities. And of course, this should go without saying, but if at any point you need to chunk down a bigger enemy, just go ahead and pop your super. And honestly, it's just rinse and repeat from there. Make sure you got plenty of void souls out there for yourself so you're weakening a ton of enemies. Pick up your orbs, pick up your void breaches. You should be good. But that is basically it for the build. I really hope you guys enjoy this build as much as I do. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next one. If you're still here, thank you so much. The support means a lot. If you really enjoy my content and want to show some extra support while getting some added perks shown on screen, consider becoming a member of the channel. Any additional support would mean the world. Also, huge shout out to my channel members here on screen. You guys are amazing and the support means the world to me. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.